let's understand what is the taylor's scientific management what principle he has given but before that let us understand what exactly taylor was who was this person and what was his background see frederick winslow taylor this was the name of mr taylor he was born in 1856 and he died in 1915 okay now this guy was a american mechanical engineer and he was the person who developed the managed theory of management okay and this is known as scientific management theory so theory of management when i'm whenever i'm speaking this term remember i'm speaking about scientific management okay now remember most of the time he worked in steel companies okay and as i have been telling you these management principle has been observed and experimented so taylor had actually experimented and seen the observations of his theory before introducing it to the world now what is this scientific management all about see earlier what used to happen when the industrialization process started managers weren't aware like what exactly should i do when this problem comes in so what they used to do they used to always follow their intuition so what they used to do is they used to see if they have similar kind of problem in past how they dealt with it they used to follow the same solution or maybe they used to take a advice from a fellow manager so what used to happen was there were no set rules and managers used to based or uh, solve this uh, situation based on the personal experiences okay so this is known as rule of thumb now remember what happens in this rule of thumb if i keep on solving the problems in this scenario chances are not every time i will get the solution let's say in the past my workers were not motivated so i gave them a rise okay i increased their wages they got motivated they started giving me more output now after few years again i faced the same problem and i think okay i'll so because i don't have any management principle i'm not aware about anything such as principles of management so what i do based on the past experience again what a, i try to increase their salaries but still they are not happy and hence like last time when the activities improved okay or when the activities increased the production increased this time i don't get the same result so what will i do again i'll try to understand what is the problem and again i'll put in some other solution or try to solve the problem in some other way so what ha happened here i wasted my time right so managers used to follow this rule of thumb but then as i just told you it had this particular limitation hence because of this reason scientific management was proposed by taylor see here what he said you need to apply standardized methods and tools to increase the output quality and reduce the cost and wastages the words of taylor was that scientific management means knowing exactly as what you want men to do and seeing that they do in the best and the cheapest way what does this mean a very simple english statement first you decide what you want from your men that is from your workers from your employees okay then see how they can do it in the best manner and in the cheapest way so this is what scientific management is all about now let's see the principles of scientific management now let's understand what exactly is scientific management all about see science is not a rule of thumb so earlier as i explained you rule of thumb had limitation so mr taylor was totally against it and he says he said science is not a rule of thumb thumb so what he did he discarded this rule of thumb theory he said you cannot apply this because this is sure waste of time and effort and you're increasing your cost he advocated a scientific approach instead of that and he said that you need to investigate the traditional methods which are there whatever the methods you have been following investigate them then find out the best practices which have been there and then lastly develop a standard method so suppose you are a car manufacturer okay now there are a series of steps involved when you are manufacturing a car 
okay now what you have done earlier you had filled the room so there used to be a particular scenario wherein the car used to be manufactured in one room in big one hall we can say and different people were doing different kind of things okay now you realize that there was a lot of time being wasted from one person to another because that unit had to be moved so when the laborers were moving that particular stuff that is the unassembled car in from one place to another a lot of time was getting wasted okay so you developed a method wherein you asked the workers to work in a particular sequence right now again that sequence worked out well but after some time due to some modifications in the design of the car that sequence went haywire and then people just forgot about that sequence and again we started following the same method so what taylor says here you need to keep on going back to those traditional methods understand those traditional methods what exactly were the methods you followed right so suppose you followed some other sequence later but that didn't give you the output so you need to keep on investigating which method method 1 method 2 method 3 which method gave me the best results unify that best practices which are available in the organization and then develop a standard method now you would have gone to a mcdonalds outlet you would have seen there's a person who will take your order the moment that order is placed she shouts out and she hands over the bill to some other person who is standing just uh, behind these cashiers right now you would have seen that person shouts out in the kitchen that these are the orders which have come okay for example there is an order of french fries veg burger or and then simultaneously there is a order of mini meal so what happens here is that the person who shouts out in the kitchen so the people there would be one dedicated person who is preparing only burgers you would have seen there is only one dedicated person who is preparing only french fries who is frying those fries you would have seen that there was one person who is only filling up the drinks that is the whatever we order like let's say if you are ordering coke she fills up that or if you are ordering a soft tea she there is an another person separate counter who provides you with soft tea so and then there is one other person who assembles this order and places it to the customer so now you saw how the work has been divided so how this was developed and why mcdonalds has been efficient enough to quickly give you the order within 5 minutes from the time you place your order because they have unified the best practices and developed a standard mechanism when a customer places an order so just as i told you when you are selecting one best method you are saving your time efficiency money and resources whatever effort you are putting in you are saving that effort improving your efficiency money and resources now the second principle what he said is harmony not discord now earlier what used to happen people never gave that equality so a manager always felt i am superior whatever i decisions i take they are the best okay he never you know actually thought about the suggestions coming from worker he never gave that respect to the worker so there was constant friction now remember when you would have heard that whenever two humans are working or whenever the human beings are together there is bound to be some kind of friction okay but then earlier there used to be a lot of friction now mr taylor or taylor was totally against it he said there has to be a complete harmony between the management and workers they cannot just say we cannot work in an environment and they cannot just say yes we have friction because whenever this happens the productivity gets affected and the efforts which are put in get affected and you don't get the best results so he asked for a complete mental revolution on part of both the management and workers the revolution was the management should respect the workers they should allow them to give a free feedback free suggestions which the manager can decide whether they are worth pursuing it or not okay simultaneously the workers should also respect the management they should ensure that whatever the management is thinking it's in good terms 
and they should work towards organizational goals now remember that earlier what used to happen was whenever there was a friction constantly there used to be frequent strikes so the workers used to stop working and they used to go on strike so taylor said if there is harmony such things won't happen now what he said was that management and workers should transform their thinking they should start respecting each other and they should invite or the manager should be have a open heart to understand the problems of the worker accept the suggestions and vice versa okay apart from that taylor said the management should share the gains of the company with the workers so they should not be given only the salaries they should be given some part of profit which the company has been earning okay this will induce them to work hard and improve the businesses so what he said for managers first thing respect the worker accept the suggestions which he is giving for workers he said that they should accept that the business has to run successfully and hence the organizational goals has to be achieved and because of that the workers should obey what the managers are saying they should listen to him and work towards achievement of those organizational goals okay now the next principle what he gave us was that cooperation not individual individualism now what does that mean what he said that every person should not compete with each other the managers and workers shouldn't compete within each other there has to be cooperation between the labor and the management if cooperation is not present and competition is there what will happen the progress of organization will get hampered so competition should be replaced by cooperation now what he said as i told you in earlier principle that constructive suggestions made by the employees should not be ignored rather they should be rewarded so this particular principle is extension of the previous principle wherein we said there has to be harmony not discord so here the principle says that whenever there are suggestions whenever a worker takes an effort to improve something in organization you need to reward him not ignore that now apart from that he said there has to be a equal division of work and responsibility between the workers and the management it shouldn't happen that the workers are forced to do too many things they have too much of workload and the management is not doing anything so there has to be a proper division of work among the different levels of management and also among workers and management now the next thing what he said was development of each and every person to his or her greatest efficiency now see every person has a different level of efficiency so taylor said that you need to ensure that every worker is working in your organization to greatest efficiency each person should be scientifically selected and he should be assigned work which suits his physical mental and intellectual capabilities now see the chances are that every person will have a different capacity so some people are very good in getting things done from others okay some people would be very good in let's say let's take an example of mcdonalds to understand this now there would be a person who would be very good in preparing french fries that is frying them and packing them okay there would be a person who is very good in smiling and giving that feeling of warm when a customer arrives so when the person that is the manager is dividing work he has to understand the capabilities of different people and assign them work accordingly now he need to train employees if needed this particular principle said you need to identify if training is required or not if training is required you need to keep on giving the training to employee so that he can prove his efficiency now apart from that let's see suppose a pers person has the capability of becoming a manager so according to this principle once the manager realizes that he has the capacity to come up to that level then he should keep on training the person so that he can work towards making him a manager in the company now he also said that why training is important 
because then you can learn the best method which is available and you can ensure efficiency of workers and organization whenever something is done like let's take continue with this mcdonald example not in one day everybody was so efficient doing all the stuff which you have seen they have been provided training so they have been told what to do how to do right they would have been provided training for example if the person is customer facing so they need to smile they need to ask you may i help you or what do you want what is the order they always greet you first so these are all trainings only after training a worker would be able to do the same thing which we expect from all the people who are standing as cashier at the mcdonald counter so what is this principle says that you need to provide training now before we end this remember one more thing that when it comes to discord or cooperation and not individualism what taylor said that you need to follow an approach wherein the organization is not affected so he also told the workers that the organization should not be affected if there is a discord that has to be registered with the manager workers has a right to do but then they should not hamper the organization working or day to day operation so in one way what he said was you shouldn't go to strikes very often now if you go to japan they have a system they never go on strike they never stop the work if in case they really are not agreeing to something what the management has told them they will only wear a black band on work so they come to work they do their work whatever is required out of them but they wear a black band saying that we are protesting your decision so this is what was expected from workers when taylor came up with these principles